Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Sports Authority Board of Directors meeting. We are glad to be back in the Bridge Building, and we want to thank Cumberland River Compact for hosting us again this year. Our staff team works very closely with the Compact around uh, parking and uh, with the other tenants of the Bridge Building uh, as it relates to events at Nissan Stadium, and they are very gracious to have us today, and um, thank you for hosting. First up is the, our meeting minutes from our May 17th meeting of the authority. Uh, they were provided in your packet of materials. Are there any questions? No questions. Uh, we would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, we have a motion and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. The minutes have been approved. There has, uh, I know, been a lot going on since our last meeting um, of the board. Monica is going to give us a uh, lengthy update today on all that she's been working on and the activities of, of her office. Um, but before we do, uh, today is also Monica's birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Monica. Thank you. Thank and the board, we won't do that. <laughs> Since I'm holding it. <laughs> okay, someone else. Then you start. <laughs> All right. We'll save that for later. Um, we do have a card for you. And we'll pass it around. So, um, with that, it was a handmade card this morning, but uh, made with love. I will take it. I'll take it. I will pass the mic to you then. Okay. Or, do you have one? I do. I have a. I'm wearing oh, a lapel perfect. mic. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, great. Well, thank you for being here this morning. We are glad to be back um, at the Cumberland River Compact Space. And I'm not sure if Mikhail and um, Eleanor are, are really gracious to host us here. And um, it's, I think, one of the most beautiful views. So we are glad to be here. You have the agenda before you. Following my report, the board will receive a fairgrounds update from Laura Womack and also an MLS stadium update from Mary Cavara. You know, with regards to the MLS stadium and the documents, I think you know, but I just want to remind you that there are three agreements that the Sports Authority will be, at, will be asked to act on or consider. Um, those are the, the stadium development agreement, the team operating lease, and a ground lease with the fair boards. You know, our plan um, was to have Law Director John Cooper here this morning to walk the authority through the draft documents in anticipation of consideration next month at our July meeting. Um, I know as of yesterday, the attorneys were still hammering out some of the final details. So um, we're not quite there yet. Um, I hear we're about 99% there. So. Um, it is still really important to the overall schedule that we stay on track and that we consider those documents in July. Um, that being said, the first or second week in July, we will probably have a special called meeting or an informational session so that um, John Cooper can walk us through those documents at that time. So we will, we will be back in touch and we'll let you know as soon as possible when that date is finalized so you can get that on your calendars. It'll be very important for you to attend um, and then we'll, we'll sit down, we'll review, and then we'll ask the board to act on them at the July 19th meeting. Any questions about that process? Okay. Well, following the MLS stadium update, the authority is going to be asked to consider the stadium architect and design contract with Populous. We talked about this last month. Um, we'll also take up a reserve date request related to the NFL draft from the Titans um, and also an extension to our agreement with the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. You may have noticed if you look at the agenda that we will not have a team presentation this morning, but the board as usual will still entertain facility questions. So if you have questions um, about any of them, then we'll, we'll save those for the end of the agenda. Um, are there any questions about the agenda? Okay. Well, I have a few more things that I do want to mention. Um, it, we have mentioned but not fully discussed the Ford Ice Center at Bellevue, and so I want to bring you up to date on where we are there. 
Um, because the building will be, that will house the ICE Center is gonna be owned by Metro Parks, um, half of it will be the rec center and then half will be the ice, the ice rink. You know, there was a period of time where we weren't exactly sure what the sports authority's role would be. And so as we've just kind of worked through things, especially over the last month, and as we've met with Metro Parks Director Monique Odom and had conversations with the Predators, I mean, I think the thought is, I mean, clearly the sports authority can add some value. And so the plan is for the sports authority to lease half of the building, or one suite is kind of what we're calling it, to, um, we'll lease that from Metro Parks and then we'll turn around and sublease that to uh, Mid Fort Ice. It'd be a management agreement. It'd be a management agreement. So that is, that's the plan right now. And again, um, we're still finalizing those documents. Our anticipation and our hope is that we will also be ready to bring those back to the board for approval next month at the July meeting. Anything you want to add? Okay. Um, also, you should have received an invitation from the Predators inviting you to attend the groundbreaking for the building, um, which will be next Friday, June 29th at 1230. If for some reason you did not see, receive that invitation, let me know and we'll make sure that we get that to you. Um, secondly, in addition to the MLS stadium design contract that the board will be acting on in just a few minutes, um, the RFQ for construction manager, that's the, that's the next piece. That was issued last week. We had a pre-offer meeting on Monday and um, we are, we'll be waiting for proposals. So the deadline for proposals for the construction manager um, are due July 9th. Um, that process is going to be similar to what we have walked through with regards to the design and the architect. So after the evaluation panel reviews those um, proposals, then an intent to award will come back to the authority and we will ask you to approve that. Um, and then ultimately the contract for the construction manager. Um, Finally, and this is something that we just are really keeping on our, our radar, but wanted to, to share with you. There is a proposal for the Quality Inn right across the street on Interstate Drive um, to become, an, I think it's an 11 story La Quinta hotel, and I believe the, the first five or six stories will be a parking garage. Um, and so we, we're just trying to get some more information on what's going on with that project. Um, as property owners, we've, st we've talked with the Titans. We um, attended a meeting of the Board of Zoning Appeals maybe about a week and a half ago. And again, we're just looking for more information and, and hope to sit down with the developers prior to them going before MDHA, which will also have to act on that proposal. So I know the Titans are just are really looking at it in terms of ingress and egress questions and how game day might be affected or impacted by traffic. So we're just keeping our eye on that and we'll let you know and give you updates as we get more information and as this moves through the process culminating, um, I think, in, in with MDHA. Okay, are there any questions? Oh, yes. I just have a statement for and especially too when we have a Tennessee State events over there, it seems like that is one of the worst parts of, I sit there one day for almost an hour and a half before the police got me out, just trying to get to the parking garage. So that's gonna even cause more of a problem over there. I just wanna make sure that we keep that up front too. No, I, appreci I appreciate that. So I think that's a concern for everyone and something that we just wanna make sure, um, you know, that traffic does not impede or impact um, you know, movement in and, in, in and out of the facility to the degree that we can. Any other questions? Okay, that concludes my report. Monica, will you tell us again the date for the grand opening in Bellevue? I, I know we've That's next an Friday, June 29th. And it's at? Um, 12.30, I believe. 12.30 to 2.30, I believe? Yes. Groundbreaking. Great. Hopefully, yes. uh, the board can attend, and I believe it's family friendly. Friendly. Um, since it's summertime. Danny Butler is here if he wants yeah. to add. Yeah, Danny, anything. do. You want? Yeah, um, do I come on? Sure, come on up. Danny Butler, 
uh, Fordyce Center. Um, like uh, Kim said, groundbreaking will be next Friday, uh, January 29th from 1230 to 2.30. A lot of fun games, so bring the kids out. It should be a lot of fun. We're going to bring all of our youth hockey and figure skaters out, so it should be a, a really, really good time. The ceremony will take place from 2 to 2.30 and uh, get everyone out of there bright and early. And then that night we have our Future Stars game, so if everyone wants to come uh, to these arena and see our rookies play, we'll be doing that afterwards. Um, anticipation of Bellevue should be open next August, August of 2019, so we're really we're excited about that. Any questions about it? Perfect. We'll see you all next week. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. I believe that concludes Monica's report. Yes. Uh, we have another update and report from Laura Womack. She is back with us to give us a Fairgrounds update. Laura is the executive director. She has a different last name from the last time I believe she reported for this body. So congratulations. Thank you. There and. Um, we look forward to hearing you. Thank, thank you for coming. Yes, thank you so much for having me this morning. I uh, wanted to take the opportunity to update you on the fairgrounds improvement efforts to date and some recent fair board actions that you should be aware of. On May 17th, we embarked on a community visioning and public engagement uh, process along with the Nashville Civic Design Center. Uh, through the series of community visioning and design workshops, we had about 150 people attended, and we had volunteer facilitators, um, about 75 volunteer facilitators throughout the uh, workshop. We had a lot of representation from Metro. Director Faulknesson was there, um, certainly the Fair Board, Nashville Soccer Holdings and their design teams as well as design teams from the mixed use. And we all work together um, really with the intent to create a more refined vision of the fairgrounds improvement efforts, uh, refine that site plan with very specific goals in mind. Uh, we certainly had some givens as we embarked on this process, uh, one being consideration of an MLS stadium at the fairgrounds, the other the mixed use, and then the third is relocation of the fairgrounds event and expo space from on top of the hill where it's currently located down below to the lower portion. There was a lot of advantages uh, through the whole project on that relocation. We did get some consensus throughout the community visioning and then public engagement. Um, some of those uh, major themes that resulted from those is increased accessibility. The hill is a big challenge, so we certainly worked very hard at making that site more accessible. Connectivity throughout the site, parking and traffic flow, as you can appreciate from your discussions just now. Uh, certainly the addition of more green space and respect for the neighborhood and of course maintaining our existing uses throughout the process. When we met with the flea market vendors, one of the fantastic ideas that came out of that meeting was for us to develop a user advisory committee and we are going to go ahead and form this committee. Essentially what it is, it's a representation of all of the major stakeholders uh, in the neighborhood and for fairgrounds uses to have a, a group that will be able to bounce things off of throughout the three-year construction period and whose input we can continue to, uh, to get from them throughout the process. So we're going to be uh, forming that committee and that will be a good tie to continuing public engagement throughout not just our improvements um, but also construction of the stadium. That said, on June 12th, the Fair Board was presented with a updated site plan for their consideration. It did include the relocation of those fairgrounds buildings to the lower portion. And this site plan was advantageous, like I said, for a variety of reasons, but most important was our ability to be able to construct those facilities while maintaining our existing structures and supporting our local business and, and 
existing events. It's very important for the fairgrounds to remain in business, to support our events that we currently host, hopefully grow that business, support our flea market and state fair as we go forward with construction. So in order to do that, we will, in this site plan, we will be able to construct those buildings as soon as, um, you know, money becomes available and all of these related approvals are passed and we'll be able to go ahead and start that construction and stay in business. So the Fair Board did vote to approve that site plan as presented. It is contingent on all of these other future actions that need to happen, not only additional Fair Board actions, but also consideration that you will have as a board and certainly legislative actions by Metro Council. So it is contingent upon that. So like I said, we're gonna continue community engagement as we proceed with facility designs. And um, so far, I mean, we've been great teammates, great partners throughout this process, and we certainly look forward to working with all of you uh, throughout this whole project. Any questions? We, we appreciate you being here today and um, giving us an update. My pleasure, thank you. Okay. At this time, Mary Cavara will give us an MLS stadium update. Mary is with Ingram Industries as a CFO and as all things soccer. Thank you for being back, Mary. All right. Good morning, thank you. You could be able to read. Okay, so since our last Sports Authority board meeting, there's a couple of updates that I'd like to give you on the MLS front. Uh, on May 21st, we named Ian Ayer as our team CEO, and we're thrilled that he's gonna be joining us. Uh, we expect that he'll be here in Nashville uh, next month. And then also on May 29th, MLS announced Cincinnati is the 26th MSL club, MLS club, excuse me, and they will actually start play in 2019. We continue to work with the league on our specific start date, but I'll tell you, all of our preparation is really geared toward a 2020 start, and we expect to get this sorted out in the near future. Another item to kind of think about from a, a broad perspective is as we think about timelines and deadlines, just kind of wanted to share part of our commitment to MLS and, and how we look at this whole calendar. So we're committed to have an MLS soccer specific stadium complete by the start of the 2021 season. And that's essentially the end of February, 2021. In order to meet MLS requirements and achieve this deadline in a cost-effective manner, there's a series of milestones along the way that we need to satisfy. Some of these include completing the stadium lease document, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes, uh, delivering final stadium plans by the first quarter of 2019, starting uh, site construction by approximately mid-2019, as well as actually completing the stadium itself. And so this timeline relies on getting the architect activated this month and the construction manager no later than August and so that's the reason why some of these documents are coming now even though 2021 really sounds like a long way off um, Monica had given you kind of an update, uh, an overview on the various documents, and I just wanted to, to come up and say, yes, we think we are about 99% complete. We'll be working with uh, Metro Legal and try to get those wrapped up this afternoon. Um, and then also as a reminder, part of the process on our side is that the lease agreement has to be submitted to MLS for their approval, and that was also part of the language that was in the resolution. So we'll be getting that process started so that that won't be slowing anything up as we work through that. Um, in terms of the actual documents, as you may recall, John P Cooper provided a summary of the key terms of the various documents at the board uh, meeting in May, and they really remain consistent with what he had commented on last time. And so the documents are, the lease and development agreement are actually just one agreement, the ground lease between the stadium site uh, that's between the fair board and the sports authority. And then there's another document, the construction administration agreement. And when he distributes everything next week, you'll see this. And what this agreement does, it really describes how the authority and the team are gonna be working together, uh, also tied back to the development agreement, and how we're gonna provide direction to the architect and the construction manager. And one of the reasons why we need it in this case is the team, as you know, is essentially responsible for the revenue bond repayment, less the sales tax redirect and the ticket taxes. So this process that we go through is gonna be different than our prior sports venue construction. That's all I have. Thank you, Mary.
Are there any questions? Well, we have Ms. Guevara here. Thank you. That was very helpful. This moves us to agenda item regarding consideration of the architect design contract between the Sports Authority and Populous. And it's my understanding Ms. Michelle Lane uh, from Metro Purchasing uh, is here. We are pleased to have Michelle and I believe, uh, thank you. Good morning. It's there, but it doesn't work. Okay. Um, good morning. The the contract um, resulting from the solicitation that the uh, procurement division issued for design services is actually still in negotiation. Um, that contract uh, is actually going back and forth with the parties, populace as well as legal for uh, for Metro. There are some outstanding issues related to uh, specific roles uh, within the contract that are still being uh, negotiated. So um, my recommendation, of course, related to this would be um, that the authority authorize your uh, chair, once that negotiation is complete, um, to enter into that contract, to review and enter into the contract. But we received uh, red lines as early as this morning uh, related to the contract, so it is still under active negotiation. Margaret. Darby, do you want to comment or? No. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I agree with uh, Ms. Lane about um, going ahead and authorizing the chair and the secretary to execute the agreement once it has been finalized and to you know, review all of the additional changes that uh, will likely be made from the document that you have in front of you. And you can see in there, there's some places that have blanks that need to be filled in and um, some TBDs to be determined. But um, at this time, I have prepared a resolution for the board to go ahead and um, give that authorization to the chair to execute the agreement once it is final. And the resolution is behind tab three in your packet. with the resolution. I just thought it might be helpful to just, since we haven't seen this contract, if you can kind of take us through what are still the pending items that need for that chair would be <laughs> deciding that we would be delegating those issues to the chair. I would like to turn that over to Michelle, who was involved in the actual negotiations. I have not been involved in those negotiations directly. And I will say that unfortunately I have had limited interaction in the negotiation. Uh, our senior procurement officer who actually is responsible for this project uh, had a, I don't want to call it an emergency, but she was unable to be here um, really at the last minute this morning. I know that uh, we did have quite a bit of um, conversation and negotiation around the pricing. Uh, there was some specific question around um, change order authorizations and who would be authorized to approve those uh, as they're going to be happening kind of for lack of a better term, um, you know, on the fly, in the field, as work is being conducted. Um, so there, that is really the basic point of contention. Otherwise, and I, won't, I don't want to call it contention, but point of discussion. Um, otherwise, we use a standard architect and engineering contract template um, that was included with the solicitation um, that was accepted during that process. Um, that template includes very clear roles and responsibilities for each one of the parties, in so much as this solicitation and the resulting contract is a little different in that we have multiple parties with different roles. Um, that is really kind of the point there that we need to, to finalize is who's going to actually be responsible for approving those change orders, who's going to have authority then to also, um, you know, make sure that any additional work that has to be uh, performed that you learn through the course of executing that work uh, is going to be approved. And so that's really where we are. I don't know if... Um, Okay, thank you. Mary can bring some additional clarity to it. Thank you. Thank you, So, Margaret, in response to your question, uh, the primary items that are still open, as Michelle described, relate to this, and this is what this construction administration agreement defines, and I know our attorneys had spoken to Populous last night, explained what's going on, they understand it, so it, we're past the point of... of 
it being contention, it's just getting the right language in there. So that clarifying language will be added into this document. There's also some minor business terms that we're going through, and I think the remainder of some of the um, there's not a significant amount of what I would call some of the legal terms. I know Tom Cross has reviewed, our folks have reviewed, and we're comfortable with those changes there, so they're really more kind of clarifying language is what's left. So what's in front of us, just the, the template? It's essentially the form of the agreement and the actual that you all use. It's, it's even further than the form. That it's it's kind of what was negotiated yes. as of last Friday, what we had okay. submitted to them. So there's still open items where Populous needs to insert the names of everybody on the team. Um, the fee has been negotiated, but we need to get it in there. Yeah, I would, I would or, oh, exactly yeah. So on Friday, we received, Friday afternoon, we received the latest version of the contract, which is what you have before you um, from legal and from purchasing. And since over the last week, we have continued the conversations, and especially as Mary said, in regards to this construction administration agreement, as um, Populous wants to um, really just confirm exactly who are we, who are we answering to and what order, and, and like Michelle said, if something happens out in the field and we need to make a last minute change, who do we need to get approvals from? And so that's a lot of what is still being worked through. So you're saying that under 3.9, key person staffing by architect, project team, that has been determined. You all are in agreement with that. Yes, they need to send us that list in writing and we need to confirm that those are the people that they had listed in the RFQ that they so told us would be the key team. Yes, I mean, as part of that solicitation process, um, Populous is one of those proposers was required to provide that information to us so that we could get a sense of what their team looked like. Um, but in terms of having it solidified for the contract, we would need to have that list so that we know exactly who we're dealing with um, and who we would be, you know, asking specific questions to. Are you in agreement as to the list of who are the project team? I have not seen the list um, of who's in the project team, but once that list is received, if the you know, owner's rep here, the, the representative for the sports authority is in agreement with that list, as well as, um, you know, Mary, you know, they're in agreement with it, then we're certainly going to be, you know, in agreement with that list as well, because they are the owners of the process. Right, and the pricing is not, is that an agreement? Are you agreed upon us with pricing? The, oh, yes, we, we've yeah. had extensive conversations and negotiations around the pricing. All right, but we don't see that right here. Is that right? That's not in here. That was in the um, in the email okay. that you should have received at the proposal fee, and, 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 and that value will be listed in that final contract consistent with that amount. Okay, so that is what was sent to us. Yes. Price. Yeah, that was the proposal fee. There was okay. there was a list of questions that we needed to get answers to, and so as as that was compiled by Populous and sent back to um, to legal, the sports authority, this whole team, Ron Gobble, then it had that information. Okay, and then the only other question is DBE. Has that been decided? Is that? Yes, the DBE target, target. Uh, if you will, on the project is 30%. So, you know, we're working through that. Our Office of Minority and Women Business Assistance uh, would be working closely with uh, Populous uh, to ensure that they're able to meet that. Okay, so just one more question, as I said, just because we don't have all of this here, and so I'm just trying to make sure we know what we're delegating to our chair to okay. sign. What is the time time restriction on this? Just wondering, since we're going to be meeting in a couple of weeks anyway, so we could probably see the full contract? Because we are here on these other documents with the, an the informational session. Okay. So I'm the, just wondering what's yeah. the time. Well, the start. issue is right now we're about 30 days behind, and if we don't get the architect started this month, like next week, with the preliminary kickoff of the design sessions, we can't afford to go another three weeks, or it will cause issues later on. And so we just, um, this was targeted to get kicked off back in May. And But you, but the, we're hoping, or the plan is that as legal finalizes the agreement, that the out. board should receive those hopefully tomorrow, maybe Monday. Yeah. Yes. yes. So in other words, you will be showing us 
before she signs the agreement what the final decision was, even though we delegated for her to yes. sign. Yes, we will have that. Margaret Darby, will you red line and send that out to the board once it's available? The, a red line of the architect? I can find out if there's one being made. I, it, it's a there purchasing, is. Yeah, it's there purchasing is. issue, so I don't get the day to days on this one. So we can make sure to forward to you the, the most recent red line that we received as of this morning. Are there any other questions? <coughs> now, given the fact that we will receive the writing red line prior to the decision being made, I would move that we give our chair the authority to move forward after we receive it. I second it. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is approved. Motion Thank carries. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, next up is consideration of the Titans reserve date request for the NFL draft. So you'll remember last month, um, Steve Underwood briefly addressed the need to discuss how the authority and the Titans should address reserve dates for 2020. You know, as you all know, and as he mentioned last month, the Titans will be hosting the MLS team um, during their inaugural season at Nissan Stadium. And so we wanted to make sure that we understand how the reserve dates will work because, you know, we anticipate that they will play, you know, in upwards 17 up to maybe 30 games. And so then about a week after that, we learned that Nashville had been selected to host the 2019 NFL draft. And we found out that the league would likely need exclusive use of all of the stadium of the facilities for about two and a half weeks. And so once that came up, we realized, okay, we really have a more urgent need to have this conversation as it relates to reserve dates. And so Margaret Darby and I um, had a conversation with Steve Underwood and with Burke Nihill, Titans Council. Um, and their main concern was just preventing these 18 or 19 dates when the lots would be used for the draft. Um, they didn't want those to count against the 30 exclusive dates that they have to use the stadium and the facilities every year. So as we looked at section 3.1 of the stadium lease agreement, and you have that in your packet behind um, tab two in the executive director's report, then we agreed that they, they can possess and use the facility as reserve dates without it counting against their exclusive dates. And, and that's mostly because of the amount of notice that's required in that provision. So um, for exclusive dates, I think the, the notice requirement is 15 days. For these reserve dates, um, it ends up, it's pushed out to like 45 days. So they could, they could still use the facilities as reserve dates, but it requires more notice, and we have plenty of notice. So in your packet behind tab four, you'll find the letter from Mr. Underwood formally requesting that the facilities be reserved exclusively for the NFL draft. The draft is April 25th through the 27th, but they will need exclusive or anticipate needing exclusive use of the facilities from about April 4th. 14th through May 1st. So staff recommends approval um, of this request. We, we feel like the, the lease provides for that. Are there any questions? Just we have a motion to approve uh, the NFL draft April 14th through May 1st, 2019 to be considered reserve dates under the lease, but not count against their 30 exclusive dates. Do we have a second? Motion and properly seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, motion is approved. Any opposed? Okay, moving on. Um, Kim, would you use your mic? Please? Yes, sorry. The motion was approved. Um, at this time, we move to consideration of an extension to the lease agreement between the Sports Authority and the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. All right. Um, and Bill Emmendorfer is, is on his way up, and as he comes up, I'll, I'll start and just say that our lease with the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame inside Bridgestone Arena expires on July 31st. Um, this will mark the completion of 
two 10-year terms. The original lease does provide for, um, for three, for a total of three 10-year terms for over 30 years. Um, but understanding that we anticipate, you know, at, at some point in the coming years, there will be some uh, renovations to Bridgestone Arena. We don't know. We don't have a time on that yet. Um, and so we just don't feel that entering into another long-term agreement without having some of this information is, is wise. Um, so what, we are, what we're asking is that the Sports Authority consider um, an amendment um, that basically would extend the lease out for one more year with the option for a second one-year term. If you remember last year, actually it was last June we were in this room, we did the same thing with Sirius XM Studios um, and, and the board approved and abbreviated. <coughs> it was an amendment that it just shortened their lease. So they, um, they were granted a two-year extension. Initially that was going to be a one-year, but because of some investments they were putting into the building, we decided that, you know, that that was right and fair for them to give them two years. So in a similar vein, we're doing the same thing with the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. And um, just because there's a, we don't know what we don't know yet, we, we feel like a shorter extension is the way to go here. Well, we have been tenants for a long time, for 20 years, and it's been a wonderful relationship. And we, our desire is to keep that relationship. Obviously, we've made significant investments into the hall. Just recently, we put in over a half a million dollar exhibit in the hall. But this works out well for everyone as we evolve with the remodeling and the evolution of Bridgestone Arena. It gives us time to, to figure out the best use of the space and the best use for the Hall of Fame. And so I think the Hall of Fame needs to stay somewhere in the heart of Nashville and somewhere hopefully close to the arena or in the arena, but it's our desire to continue this relationship. It's been a, a wonderful relationship with, with this board and with this organization. And, you know, we just, we just finished our 52nd induction weekend. It was the best ever. And we had about a thousand people attend total of over six events. And it was a wonderful, wonderful weekend to celebrate the sports heritage and the things we're doing in the community. So we appreciate the consideration of this organization, this board, and, and we, we are glad to be a part of Bridgestone and we think we're part of the fabric of Bridgestone. Thank you. Bill, would you introduce yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Bill Amendorfer, the executive director of the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. Thank you. Uh, and I was going to say, I've had, you know, meetings and multiple conversations with Bill and, and the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame is, is such a great partner and we're very appreciative and supportive of the work that they do in honoring and recognizing the great athletes and coaches who have come out of Tennessee and so we, we really support your efforts, we support what you're doing in the community um, and, and just are, are, are pleased with all that. Are there any additional questions for Bill? Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on this item? Madam Chair, I move that we extend the contract with the uh, Sports Hall of Fame. We have a motion to approve the one year extension to the lease agreement between the Sports Authority and the Tennessee. Sports Hall of Fame. Is there a second? Second. Motion and properly seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries and is approved. Moving along, we are at our facility questions portion of the agenda. Um, the facility reports are in your, your packet. Are there any questions for our facility partners? Our next meeting is scheduled for July 19th at Nissan Stadium. And um, attendance is critical, as always. Um, we will we'll have a very meaty agenda next month, no doubt. Uh, at this point, we believe um, 
there is only one appropriately excused absence, and that will be Miss Collot, because she is expecting her first child, and it, the due date is around that time. So we understand if, if uh, we don't see you next month, but congratulations, she's um, uh, going to have a little boy. So yes. congratulations. Congratulations. As always, the staff asked to leave your binders on, on the table so they can be reused. And, um, and then if I can also say, we will nail down the date of this, this special call meeting or the informational session that we'll need to have, and we'll get, out, we'll get that out to you as soon as possible. I think, I think we target the first or second week in July. I know we, I know we have a holiday in there. See no other business. Is there a motion to adjourn? So <laughs> All right. Thank you. We are adjourned. Right. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.